David, a lot of people have said, oh, welcome by the way, a lot of people have said, this, uh, have said for a long time this was going to be an impossible job for someone. As you sit there now, how do you feel being the manager of Manchester United? Well, incredibly privileged that I was, uh, that I was given the opportunity to manage Manchester United and grateful to Sir Alex and grateful to the board for, for making that happen. But, uh, it, was a, it was a really strange situation for me. I had no idea whatsoever. You know, a lot of people thought that I'd, I'd known something about the job. I knew nothing at all about it until Sir Alex gave me a call, asked me to come to his house. Uh, I was expecting him to say, you know, I'm going to take one of your players or I'm going to do something else. I wasn't sure what he was going to say to me. And we went in and the first thing he said to me, he says, uh, I'm retiring. And I said, yeah, when? You know, because he was never retiring, was he? And he says, next week. And his next words were, and you're the next Manchester United manager. So I didn't get a chance to say yes or no. I was told I was the next Manchester United manager by Sir Alex. So for me, that was enough. As you can imagine, the blood drained from my face. And uh, I was uh, really shocked, more shocked that Sir Alex had chosen to retire. But uh, inside, I was incredibly thrilled that, that I was going to get given the opportunity to manage Manchester United. David, hello. Um, it was often said over the years that you were the natural successor to Sir Alex and that you'd be tailor-made for this job. I, I appreciate you've only just arrived, but does it feel a good fit? Does it feel like the right place to be for the challenges and the excitement that lies ahead? Well, I don't know yet. I'll, time will tell with that. But, you know, any, any football coach who, who wants to coach or manage, when you look outside any window, you see Old Trafford. You have to, because it's the, it's the place you want, to, you want to go. I always hoped that, you know, when, when Sir Alex's days would come, then I might be a consideration. I also think that it's, it's, a, it's a plus for British coaches that, you know, you, you might have to work through the lower leagues like, like I did a bit at Preston. You know, you progress and, you know, hopefully if it goes well for you, you get an opportunity. And it's not happened so much for, for a lot of our British coaches. So from that point of view, hopefully, you know, people can see that you know, if I can do it, then they can do it as well. David, do you, do you feel, um, is it an excitement? Is there, is there a sense of trepidation of the sort of enormity of it all? Yes, I've got to say that whoever was going to take over this club knows the, the, the job taken over from, from the manager before, who was you know, incredible. Someone who everybody in football looks up to, worldwide known, uh, his achievements have been, you know, there's probably no better, you know, and he comes from a list of many Scottish managers, you no, know, Sir Matt, you know, Bill Shankly, Jock Steen, and certainly Sir Alex is right up with that group of managers. David, that, being, that being the case, David, what, what do you think you can do to leave your mark on, on this football club? Well, all I can do is do what David Moyes has done before. I'll definitely continue with the traditions of Manchester United and, uh, but I have to in my own way put my own stamp on the club. Sir Alex had to do it when he took over. It took him a little bit of time. Uh, I'm very fortunate I'm taking over the champions of England. So from that point of view, it gives me a great starting point, better than most would ever get. So I, I do hope that I in my own time can, can show that. I've got to say Sir Alex and the board have been unbelievably supportive. They really have. Uh, the people, Sir Bobby Charlton came to see me. I was as thrilled about that as I was about anything. He came in and saw me at the, at the, the training centre and, uh, you know, it was as big a thrill for me as anything and uh, something I, uh, I certainly enjoyed. David, have you had the chance to speak to Wayne Rooney and clarify his situation, given what blew up at the end of last season? Yeah, I've, I've had uh, opportunities to, to speak. Uh, I was just about to say that it was interesting to, to think that actually Wayne's only 40 goals behind Sir Bobby Charlton or 50 goals behind Bobby Charlton and I think 40 behind Dennis Law. So uh, it's, I've had a chance to speak to Wayne. You know, I'm sure it's, it's a question on, on your lips and you probably couldn't wait to get it out. No. But uh, the fact of the matter is, no, Wayne's not for sale. He's a Manchester United player, will remain a Manchester United player. I've been fortunate, I've known Wayne since he was 16. And uh, I mean, some of you in here have seen some of the faces who were probably at my, my early press conferences at Everton. And uh, it's a little bit of deja vu, actually. It's, uh, similar sort of feeling. But I've had several meetings with Wayne. Uh, he's training brilliantly well. He's come back in good shape. 
and I really look forward to working with him. Has he told you he would like to stay at Manchester United? Well, what we, we are doing at the moment is we are looking to see how we can get Wayne Rooney getting those goals, which is going to challenge the likes of Bobby Charlton and Dennis Law's number. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, the way he's working, I'm more than happy to, to work with him and make sure we, we get success. Is he the to stay at club then, himself, Wayne Rooney? We're working, as I say, and we're trying everything we can to make sure that we get Wayne to the level where we think. I mean, not only that, you know, this country's got a World Cup hopefully next year to play in. So, you know, for everybody's benefit, we try and get him in a condition, you know, a state where everybody thinks hey, he's getting much more like the Wayne Rooney we all know. And I'm, right. and I'm looking forward to, to making that happen. We understand he told your predecessor he wanted to go at the end of last season. Mm -hmm. Has he now said he wants to stay? He's, we've spoken several times, and as far as I've seen it, I'm sort of saying, whatever happened before is gone, Wayne. We're working together now. Uh, and, I, you know, I see a chink in his eye at the moment. I see a little a glint, not chink, a glint, where I should say he's sort of, he looks happy. I think he looks as if he's saying, I'm going to knuckle down, I'm going to get myself right. And I can only say I've been impressed with how he's done. And let, let's not kid ourselves on, he's a terrific player. And, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. And the club, of, as what I've just said, they have reiterated, it won't be for sale. So, uh, David, sorry, you say what's gone is gone. <clears throat> but the, the person who made the statement about Wayne Rooney asking to leave, he, he may not be in the job anymore, but he's still around, he's still part of the club. Very much so, yes. Does it not kind of undermine what he says if... Well, there was, a, there was a private meeting between two people. I wasn't privy to that. So whatever happened in that meeting was said, you know, I'm now looking at my period at Manchester United and I'll take it on from there. Does he want the club to make it clear that he never asked formally for a uh, transfer? No, as I said, I, says, I, I don't know what those two gentlemen said together when Wayne and Sir Alex spoke together. They both of them spoke and, uh, you know, that conversation was private between them both. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to having a go with Wayne and getting him to the levels what, what I know he's capable of and everybody at Manchester United knows he's capable has, of. Has Wayne Rooney categorically said to you, I do not want to leave this club? I can tell you categorically Wayne Rooney is training fantastically well in the last two days. That's all I can categorically tell you. David, would you like to see him end his career here? Do you see that? Well, as I said, I think, you know, if I was Wayne, uh, you look at the legends who've played for this club, you know, I, I, at the new uh, Aeon training centre, I went down at, and the pictures they've got up on the wall, when I walked in, you know, I could see George Best and Dennis Law and Bobby Charlton, and Roy Keane, oh, I could go on and on. And I thought to myself, you know, Wayne isn't that far away from that. You know, it isn't too difficult to get the goals. And if he could do that, he would be seen in the same light as many of those people. Can Wayne we now, can we change the subject now, please? Just, just finally, is there only no. Wayne that can stop this speculation then now? Because obviously with the tour next week, you've stated that Wayne's not for sale, but we don't really know what Wayne thinks. Well, what I've said is, no, Wayne won't be sold by Manchester United. Do you, do you feel at all intimidated by the fact Sir Alex will sort of still be around and could be sat in a director's mm -hmm. box yeah. when you're down on the dugout and you'll be looking around and mm -hmm. thinking... Mm, I wonder what he would do in this situation. Do you know, I actually hope he is sitting in the, the director's box because he's been so good. I've already called him two or three times for some advice uh, on matters, you know, and I, I have to say, you know, there's a lot of things been said, but, you know, a big thank you to the staff who worked with Alex, you know, Rennie, uh, Mick and Eric. You know, I, I made a decision to change around. I asked Rennie to stay, but he felt it was fair on me to give me the opportunity to, to go alone. But I thank them. And as I say, the, the thing that I'm taking over from is I'm taking over from the the champions of England at this present time and gives me a great opportunity. But why would you hope that Sir Alex is behind, is behind you, sat in the director's box? Well, I, I think he's there. He's advice. He's not there to, to pressure me. He's the one who I told you when I met him, he was just said that, you were the name I told the board they should be getting as the next Manchester United manager. Uh, the Glazers have been fantastic since I've spoke to them. Uh, Ed Woodward, the new chief exec. Uh, everybody's really helped me. And I've got to say, the, the big thing for me was the players. The players have been very good. They've responded well. And uh, it's never easy um, to get into a new job. But you can imagine coming into a job the size of Manchester United and falling Sir Alex would be difficult for no matter who was sitting here. No, 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 no,
Is it like from the player's perspective? You, you've been here for kind of seven, eight years. It's the same person that's given you in team talks, your instructions that you've run things with. What, what's it like having a different person giving you the instruction? Obviously, the when the gaffer decided to retire, I was surprised. Like even the the, the David and the, was surprised to everyone. Was shocked. But uh, after that, we we know it was manager was soon to retire, one or two years, and uh, players adapt quick because obviously the they want to win the trophies, they have working ethic, the the respect what is the manager did uh, uh, in Everton, had a great job at Everton, and and uh, we're looking forward to work with him. And like we show in, the, I think, first few days, I was really excited to see the players, they're pushing forward, they're training well, and uh, that show by uh, example they're, they're, they're excited to work with uh, David. David, okay. but what is success for you in your sort of first season at the club? Success, well, I come to a, a club where the word success is tattooed right across its badge. So my job is to continue that. Uh, you know, this club's about winning trophies and uh, it's something I'm looking forward to doing. I'm hungry to do it. I'm driven to try and succeed. And, uh, but I'll not change myself. You know, it won't change me. Hopefully, I'll be the same person I was. But uh, I'm determined to try and uh, make sure I get the first one on the board. David, relatively speaking, you don't have a comparable record to some of the other coaches who were linked with this job, particularly in European football. That may mm. have been circumstances of the club you're mm. at before. But do you have confidence in yourself that, particularly in Europe, you've mm. got what it takes to match the, um, yeah. the predecessor? I'm inexperienced in a lot of those things. And there were some brilliant managers who could have quite easily uh, taking this role. But the biggest confidence I got was that Sir Alex Ferguson said to me, you're the next Manchester United manager. David, with, um, we imagine a stronger Manchester City this, this season, mm -hmm. Chelsea um, reappointing their old manager. Yeah. Do you think you need to do much to your to your squad to make sure that you can try and keep that distance that, that this club established last year at the top of the league? Well, they, they, had, a, they had a great season in the Premier League, Manchester United, last year. And it is something we we will do everything we can to add to the squad. This club has done it. We'll always go after the best players. Uh, we'll always be interested in them. So we'll we'll do everything we can to make sure that we remain at the top. And uh, you know, I'm looking forward to be given that challenge. Do you think there's any chance that you'll manage to? Well, what I'll do is I don't know the people who know me. I speak. I would never speak about players at other football clubs because I think it's wrong. You know, it's not my style. The people who know me from the Merseyside. I'll try and answer as many questions as I can, but I think when people are in contract to other football clubs, I think it's it's wrong to talk about them. So, uh, but as I said in the, the earlier, just to finish off, this club's always interested in the best players. How important, David, was it for you to bring on board Phil Neville and also to, yeah. to appoint Ryan Giggs to the coaching staff? Well, I wanted to make sure that I had I had connections through what had happened here, and I have to say that you know I I spoke with Paul Scholes as well. And Paul Scholes has, has felt that he wanted to, to have some time off with his family. Uh, I spoke with Rennie. So I, I thought the obvious, the obvious person was, was Ryan. And Ryan's been great. And I've got to say, you know, it's, I've only worked with him for two days, but I mean, he's, he's an incredible footballer. And sometimes until you get really close, you don't realise. He's been on his pro licence, he's, he's taking steps forward. And to get him and Phil Neville together, I wanted to make sure that I had a, a, some young members of staff behind me as well. And that, uh, you know, if there was anything else I needed doing, which I couldn't do, they were there to, to help me out. What has been your initial um, observations about the squad you've inherited, David, and also what your thoughts on the start you've been handed in the Premier League? Because it's a, it's a pretty tough start. Yeah, well, the, the squad I've inherited, you know, I've not got all the players back just now because a lot of them are still in, coming back from different tournaments. But I've, I've seen them. The biggest thing is that I've, I've been really impressed by their attitude and the way they've gone about their work. I mean, total professionals, they really have been. And on the start to the Premier League, you know, I think it's a really tough start. I'm not convinced that that's the way the balls came out of the hat when, uh, when that was getting done. <laughs> but uh, but no, nevertheless, you've got to play everybody twice. And, uh, you know, I think I've looked back, I think over the last five years, I've never seen Manchester United get a tougher start in any Premier League season. How will the David Moyes Manchester United side play? Well, I hope the same way. I hope the same traditions. I hope uh, entertaining, exciting football. But I've always said, you know, the biggest thing is football is to win. 
and uh, the job here is to win. Um, on that subject, um, Alex Ferguson's teams, it, it always seemed like they had, had to entertain as well as win. Mm -hmm. I mean, is, is that part of your remit as I, you see it? I hope so. I hope that'll be the way. But as I said, you know, I would always probably put winning uh, at the top of the list. I, I don't think <coughs> I've ever changed from that. And I'm sure Sir Alex would as well. You know, I think if you had a great entertaining team but you didn't win the games, you know, you, it's not, it doesn't quite get you anywhere. So I think you've got to get the balance right, and hopefully, hopefully I can. Do you think the difference, David, is the, is the degree of expectation? United might be losing 1-0 mm -hmm. with 10 minutes to go, but the supporters will ex still expect that team to win. Is, is that one of the biggest sort of challenges you face? Well, I think they've proved that they do, don't they? The amount of people and the, the, the players who can come on and win them games has been incredible. So hopefully that won't change. Hopefully all of the, that same magic touch, which Sir Alex used to have at times when he made remarkable decisions we got them results from nowhere at times so you know from that point of view I hope I'm, I'm able to do that. Is there any message you had from the squad when you met them for the first time about your mission that you said to them? No I just said that uh, you know we start the, not everybody's here so it wasn't as if I could go in there and sit down and say here this is what we're doing because half of them are still away just now so that'll come in time but I had a word with the players the other day and said that I was surprised that Sir Alex had chosen to retire but when he had he'd given me the opportunity to take the job and you know, I hope they respect that. And uh, we work together and we try and be successful together. Is there a single piece of advice that Alex has given you, David, that sort of sticks in your mind and you can impart to us about doing this uh, job? It was incredible when I met him. He, you know, he, he, he nearly spoke and within half an hour he was talking about the squad and the players and the staff. And it was a, it was a, a period for me, it was nearly... I couldn't believe it and obviously at that time I was sworn to secrecy because Sir Alex was keeping his retirement private until the right moment and I only knew a couple of days before we played Liverpool and I got the call so he said a lot of things to me about, about the club, how great it was, the people who worked for it and uh, he felt that I could, I could take it on and he told me things which could be improved on as well so he was very honest in his assessment. When he's spoken to you about the squad, what has he said to you about Wayne's situation? Well, he said to me, you know, that have got a very, very good player there. That's what he said. A very good player there who, who over the over recent seasons has been a big player, made a big impact in games, scored a lot of goals. And, uh, you know, all the things he spoke about the squad have been very positive. You said that not everybody's here. You obviously go on tour next, next week. Yeah. Just logistically, who's not going to go on that tour? Who's not going to go? Well, we've got a, there's a few injury doubts, people coming back from injury. So that would be the that would be the doubts. There's a little bit of doubt, doubts about Ashley Young, a little bit of doubts about Chris Smalling. Uh, Nanny's had a, an operation in his nose. So there's, there's, there's a few, but they still may go at the moment until they're back in or I get an assessment. That's, well, certainly Chris Smalling and... and uh, uh, who else was seen One of the others is, is back. Ashley, sorry. We'll, we'll assess them probably at the start of next week to see got, how they are. Sorry, you had three players at the tournament as a hub, um, yeah. Kagawa and Hernandez. Are they, are they going? Or well, at the okay? moment, uh, Sahaz due in on, for training on Monday, and we'll assess that when he comes in. Kagawa will meet us in, in Japan uh, and be involved in the, in the leg in Japan. Hernandez isn't going to come out because he's just finished with the Confederations Cup, so he'll come back to the Aeon Centre and uh, he'll train there. You under yeah, how much the the pressure to win the title, to retain the title, given that it would probably be seen as failure if you don't, seeing as they are the reigning champions? Yeah, I, I, I know what I've got, I know the, the job in hand. and uh, But I'm sure when Sir Alex took over the job at Manchester United, he knew the job in hand and he, he had some hard, hard years initially. Fortunately, he's left me uh, a really strong team which I think gives me a great chance of retaining the title. What well, did he say that he handed you a, a six-year contract? I mean, that seemed to be a, a statement yeah. of intent from the club. It was. Well, I, I have to say I found the, the people at the club fantastic. They want continuity. They want longevity. As you've seen, that they're not a club who, you know, make quick, quick decisions. But I think when they do, they do it the right way. Uh, yeah, I have to also say, you know, a, a big thank you to, to Bill Kenwright and Everton for everything they'd done for me and, and obviously it was really disappointing for him when I, when I
when I had to leave. Uh, but I'm sure he understands that, you know, I had to make this move. Does that send the pressure on you, David, a little bit more than knowing that this club, more than any other club, had patience with Sir Alex for four years when he didn't win anything? Yeah. They've given you a six-year contract. You know you're probably going to get some something yeah. to build on, don't you? Well, I don't think it's just me or, or Manchester United. I think it's something which should happen in, in, throughout football. You know, there's a lot of managers getting sacked very quickly. Uh, I've been really fortunate that I worked under Brian Gray uh, at Preston North End. I worked under Bill Kenwright at Everton, two chairmen who gave their managers an opportunity, or their manager an opportunity to succeed. And I can only tell you the people I've met so far. Uh, the Glazers, Ed, you know, they see it as, as a long, long haul, and I hope that's the case. Is there, is there, is there a, uh, on the players' part, is there sort of a, a real determination to, to prove that you can do, you can t continue to be very successful under a different manager? Uh, and how much sort of responsibility sort of rests on, on the experienced heads like yourself? Always when you come new manager, the, the, the players increase their work because they want to show how much they can do. The, how good the players they are. Obviously, David, he's working in Premier League for the last 10, 12 years, and uh, he has already opinion about the players, but players want to prove how much they can. And uh, that's what they've seen in the first few days, straight away, players working hard. Some of them, they already came ready, which is a good sign. And uh, you know what, we're playing for Man United, one of the biggest clubs in the world. There's always pressure on the players. Young or older, it doesn't matter. And obviously now it's a different stage of the of the, of the, for the club as well, and we all, all have to stick together, we have to work hard, and we have to help the manager to to achieve what he really wants, and the way he wants to play. The last home game, Sir Alex said, told the fans that their job was to get behind you. Can you tell what you're expecting from the supporters? First time they've had a new manager in their lifetime, some of them. Yeah, well, I'd say most people, I don't know how many in this room, have seen how many Manchester United managers in their, in their lifetime, never mind the supporters, but... It's certainly not that many. Uh, I'll be new to a lot of the supporters, but hopefully, you know, you know, this is a, a new era now. Sir Alex will never go away. You know, you can see his stand, you can see his statue. He's he's always going to be here, and uh, I've got to say, he's someone who I'll I'll use for advice. But hopefully, the supporters now realise it was his time to to finish, and that somebody else has to come in. Is it not impossible to match up to what he achieved here? Obviously, you'll win your own thing. Impossible. To, to manage at this level for 25 years and, and have his success, I don't think there'll be any other manager who does 25 years at a club like Manchester United at, you know, at this level. How strange was it changing your transfer targets virtually overnight, mm -hmm. given the, the shock of everything from planning for Everton for this yeah. season to planning for Manchester United? How? difficult was that and did well, you seek advice from mm -hmm. Sir Alex about that yeah. for instance? Well the fact is I've only been the manager since the 1st of July so obviously you know before that there's been a month of June where I've been I've been able to look at things but it does change because you know we it was a different a different window we'd have been shopping in at Everton compared to where we're shopping now at uh, Manchester United and that's why I said earlier I said you know this club will always go for the best players but it'll always look to buy the best young players and, and a big part of my job is to is to bring through the, the young players from the academy. I think we try to do that as well as we possibly could at Everton, introduce young players to the team. And it's in the it's in the sort of the DNA here. You know, we're looking to bring through our own players. In terms of other clubs strengthening the likes of Chelsea and Manchester City, where do you see the biggest threat? I'm sure you've got a sense of the, the Manchester scene here now with City just yeah. over the road. But will it be Chelsea? Will it be Manchester City? Where, where do you think? Well, I think I think there'll be I think there'll be improvements from all the, all the clubs. You know, I'm I'm really pleased to see Josie back. He's someone who I think everybody will enjoy. You know, working in this country, he's been very successful, and uh, I think we'll enjoy having Josie back in the Premier League again. And uh, Manuel Pellegrini will, I'm sure, will come in. I've come across him a couple of times with Villarreal in, in Malaga, so it'll be it'll be new to him as well. So probably for the first time, there's been quite a big shake-up in the Premier League, and because of that, you know, there's a lot of things unknown uh, how things will pan out. So I don't think it's just at this club. I think there's a few other clubs very similar. You had a fantastic record um, against City as Everton manager. I imagine you're uh, pretty keen to ensure that continues. Well, I think it's it's one of the important things, but the best record would be the one that they've just done last year is winning the league, and that would probably be the, the record I'd like to, like to have more than any.
Can we have the last couple, please? Is that the priority? And obviously, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, Barcelona, you know, they, they, they've been on a perhaps a, a, a level higher than United over the last couple of seasons. But is, is retaining the league the priority rather than... You know, I, think, I actually think it's doing well in all the competitions and the Premier League. I think if you're at Manchester United, uh, my thinking, it might change, is, is that... Uh, is that you know you have to go for everything. You attempt to win everything. Maybe, maybe you miss out at times, but you attempt to win all the trophies. And I, I, I done it anywhere else I've been, and I'll certainly do it here because I've got a bigger squad, quality players, and a couple of the tradition who have been used to winning, winning trophies. Imagine what Wayne Rooney told you about his future at the club. I don't really talk with Wayne about his future. Obviously, what I can see the Wayne. Trained really well last few days. He's in good, really good shape. I think he's the best shape in the last five years. And uh, I'm looking forward to see him playing for the club and and do his best. Uh, like I said, we never talk about his future. Okay, I think I, I think we've covered that, Rob. Really. David, just going back to Paul Scholes, is that something you might revisit revisit in the future? Yeah, I, I mean, I've got to say, when I spoke to him, he was absolutely fantastic in the phone. You know, he wanted to give me as much help and gave me some direction on some things. I probably spent an hour or two on the phone with him, but uh, you know, he wants to give his family some time. But you know, there'll be a place for him. We'll, we'll look to bring him back in when he thinks he's ready. David, in terms of new signings, how close are you to any? Are you, do you think you'll have any done before the tour? Or? Uh, I'll try, but I'm not, I couldn't turn around and say yes to that. I couldn't answer it honestly and say yes, but I'm, I'll try if, if possible. But uh, you know, time's closing in a little bit just now. One last question, please. Would you, would you be eager though, to get your squad formulated before the start of the season, or are you happy to go to the end of the transfer window? Well, I think the way the transfer window, I think it might be things might be done a little bit later for, in some cases this year. I think, I think partly because of the question before, there's quite a few new, new managers in as well. You know, I don't think everything will be done exactly uh, right away. But uh, if you had the ideal, ideal position, you would, you would try and get your players in uh, as soon as you could. Okay, yeah, thanks. Sort of Gentlemen's agreement with Everton. We saw Ben Bill Kenwright saying that he'd actually not to come back for any players. Um, is that something that's going to count going ahead? Or well, no, I, I don't think that is the case. I mean, as I said, Bill Bill's been fantastic to me over my, my time at Everton. He, he really was. Uh, the club have been great. They've got a great staff there. They've, they've actually got a very good team and they've got very good players. So, uh, you know, and I brought some of my staff with me as well. But. Uh, you know, all I could ever say is, is thanks to, to what they've done for me at Everton. They were really good. OK, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.